five or six years ago, we recognised that we probably weren't presenting ourselves to the market in a uh, joined up way. Uh, good example, you know, we had a security division, catering division, cleaning division. So, you know, we had a kind of single service view of, of life and customers increasingly were looking to, um, to, to, to have one point of contact. So, we, we, you know, what we embarked upon is a, a single entity, one umbrella, if you like, for the whole UK business. So, having gone, having had uh, 30 odd different companies when I came into the group, we're now a single UK entity uh, and uh, all activities are coming together. I think we're not dissimilar to many players in this marketplace. I think we're recognising the trend to, to TFM. We believe that we're very well geared up to take advantage of that trend. We have a phenomenal range of services. I think at the last count we've got something like 75 different services. So we're well placed to be able to uh, offer a, a total facilities management solution to uh, what is actually a very large customer base as well. All clients at the moment are uh, subject to the same economic pressures, so we are getting uh, increasing um, need to reduce costs at every part of the, uh, of, of, of the supply chain. Uh, I believe that there is now more of a trend towards long-term relationships. That's really where we can make a difference, I think. I think procurement teams have done a very good job over the last 10 years in commoditizing a lot of the services that are offered in this sector. And I just wonder now whether they've perhaps, um, they certainly haven't had their day, but perhaps now they need to uh, stand back and look at how longer term relationships can really add value for, you know, for, for, for their uh, organisations. Well, typically what we're getting, I think, is there's a recognition that, that we need to move towards um, longer term contracts, but I think there's still nervousness. So what you tend to see is you'll see a, a five year contract with a, you know, a break clause at three years, for example. Uh, yeah, we've got some really, I mean, my background with uh, aviation, one of our biggest customers in the group and longest standing is British Airways, for example. We've had them as a customer for 25 years or more. And, you know, they're quite a tough company to deal with. You know, they, they've got procurement teams. They put you through um, rigorous benchmarking. But what they've recognised is that by forming an alliance with us over a long period of time, they get, you know, much more value. You know, a good example of that is where we've invested in a ground equipment so we've actually spent the money, we've actually innovated, um, taking on uh, activities that they hit, you know, did previously, linked them with things that we're doing and created efficiencies and taken away some of that um, you know, financial outlay. It is tough to reassure people that, that long-term contracts you know, really do add value, but I think what, what we now have is a much more sophisticated performance metrics in all contracts. We are, you know, we are very... Um, uh, heavily involved in SLAs and, 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 and measurement to every step of the process. So there's quite a lot of transparency about how well we're doing. I think what customers need to do is just trust more uh, their partners and actually treat them as partners uh, because I think there's a lot more value we can add. One thing the, uh, this group has, has done very well over the years is to um, diversify and grow. When you think that it's a family company uh, and a privately owned company, it's, you know, it's got a lot to be proud of. Uh, we're a very significant player in the UK, but what people don't always realise is we're also very uh, significant overseas. We have a you know, very large footprint in Southeast Asia. We're one of the biggest employers in Thailand, for example. We have 25,000 staff in Thailand engaged in a variety of FM services like cleaning and security particularly, now starting in catering. We're in uh, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, we just entered into China. And what we see is an increasing trend towards internationalization. Mm -hmm. So where the UK uh, business can play a big role in, in helping our colleagues is uh, sharing best practice. I think sharing market information. I think it's fair to say that the UK is probably the most mature uh, market in FM. And what we've been able to do is take some of our learnings and help our colleagues overseas uh, to benefit from them. We've got a strong heritage in cleaning. I think one of the, um, the strengths of the group is that strong cleaning heritage, but it's perhaps been a, a weakness in, in getting across the message that we do a lot more things. I think cleaning now accounts for just under 50% of our total activities, and most people wouldn't realise that. Um, but clearly, in cleaning and security and catering uh, and those kind of activities, there's been a trend towards, you know, um, reduce prices because of the competitive pressure, so it's become quite commoditised. So one of the things we've tried to do is to develop a new range of services that perhaps can add a little bit more value and help to uh, ease some of that margin pressure. 
We've been slowly developing uh, some capabilities in, in some of the environmental space. We've got uh, a very strong waste consultancy business, which is going great guns, called Wasteline. Um, we're starting to look at helping customers with reducing their carbon footprint, so we're getting a team of auditors you know, uh, trained to uh, assess old buildings with uh, establishing their carbon uh, footprint and then finding ways to help them um, improve that. We employ in the UK alone something like 30,000 uh, people and we have an SAP payroll system which is very sophisticated. You, clearly you can't run a business like ours if you're not paying your people on time and accurately. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things we've realised is that some of the things that we put in to support our own uh, you know, development have a, a potential application for our customers. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're talking about business process outsourcing. Uh, we're not necessarily looking um, to challenge the capitas of this world, but what we do think is that with our strong relationships with customers, that we'll be able to uh, support them with some of the things that we've built to support ourselves. Our whole philosophy is driven by our customers. I think the most important thing for us and probably everybody else in this sector is to retain our, our existing customers. In order to do that, you have to, clearly you have to deliver a good service, you know, a good core service, but you have to constantly innovate. And I think you also have to be adding value and looking at new ways of helping, helping them. And that's what's driven a lot of our uh, new thinking in terms of new services. If you align yourself to your customers and your customer strategy, you have to be prepared to take on um, you know, services and, and concepts that you've never thought of previously. Mm. Definitely, I think it's quite exciting. I, that's what makes this sector, I think, so exciting. You can't actually predict you know, what it's going to look like in, in, in a year's time, let alone uh, five years' time.